found for this integral right here from x equals a to x equals b. Let's say I asked you to find a, a quick and dirty upper bound for that. All of the values inside that yellow shaded region have to be below what? The top, really. I'm not looking for specific because I didn't give you any values, right? You know that the highest value here, let's say the highest value, let's say the highest value was, I don't know, y equals l right there. If this was the case, and let's say that this was f of x right here, what could you say about the integral of f of x dx from a to b? It has to be less than or equal to what? L, L times what? L times b minus a. Exactly. Really good there. It has to be less than the area of this whole box right there. So that's a quick and dirty way to find a maximum. Can you do something similar for minimums? Sure, you find the minimum value. Let's say the minimum value was right, I don't know, here. Let's say that's the min, y equals m. What would the minimum value be? You know it would have to be greater than or equal to m times what? b minus a. So getting back to this question, it's asking you prove that it's less than a third. You have to come up with the max and mins. And actually, the max and mins, usually you'd think you'd have to use the uh, first derivative test, find critical values. But here's the thing. What is cosine x always less than or equal to? One. One. Could I mul if I wanted to, could I multiply both sides by 17? Yeah. Pi? Yeah. Doesn't matter, right? It's what you do to one, you do to the other. If you multiply by a negative, you have to flip the sign, but that's it, right? Mm -hmm. Could I multiply by x? Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, as long as x is positive. What happens if I multiply by x squared? Is that also true? Yeah. We good with that? Okay, so you know that x squared cosine x has to be less than or equal to? X squared. Less than or equal to x squared. Okay, so let's look at this for example. You're going from 0 to what? 1. 0 to 1. So you are integrating from 0 to 1. Does that help you at all, knowing that x squared cosine x has to be less than or equal to x squared? Yeah. Yeah, it does because what could we do to each of these? Take the inner, take the uh, derivative. If one thing is always greater than the other, when you integrate, the integral is going to be greater than it, the other one, correct? Mm. What's the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared? Oh, come on. One. one third. So you know that the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared cosine x dx has to be less than or equal to? Is that exactly what you were trying to show? Yes. You start with what you know. You know that cosine x has to be less than or equal to 1. So x squared cosine x has to be less than or equal to x squared. And if one function is less than another, their integral over the same part of the domain, the inequality still holds. Does that make sense? If one car is going, always going faster than another, that first car is always going to be ahead of the other one, right? Does that make sense? Eh, kind of, maybe, sort of. Let's just stumble around in the dark for a little bit. What do you think you should be? I mean, we really only have one method here. Either you're going to see some sort of popped antiderivative, you're going to see it. Or you have really one tool, you, you substitution. So what do you think it's going to be? Yeah, so u is equal to x squared. So the differential u equals dx. So dx is equal to over what? Over 2x. OK, this looks nice. So we're trying to find this integral here. We're trying to find the integral of x squared sine of x squared dx. So we make that substitution. And what happens? U times sine u, u of du over what? Two x. So maybe you don't substitute here. Maybe you keep it as x squared. Well, you can. You can. I mean, it might not help you, but you can. I mean, it's nice because what can I can't? What what one thing can I now cancel? Can't cancel the two x. So you end up with one half of x sine u times times du. What's the problem there? Two variables. two variables. Seems like a slight problem. There's two variables here. Two variables. We don't like that. So we're kind of stuck at the moment. So no, no. Did you f of, so one to, you make it one. <laughs> because what's the integral from one to one? Zero. Zero. It doesn't matter what c is, right? But do you have any idea what the actual integral, the indefinite integral is? No. This is not a very good question. You will later learn, if you take BC Calculus, how to do something like that. But look at this. If I have a question for you, 
Jenny? If this was just an X, could we do it? Yeah. If it was just an X, it would cancel and be really nice. Mm. Slight little minute changes make it go from nice and happy to ugly, ugly and nasty. OK, with calculus part one on this side, because you have the constant below. So what do you do to the first one, Carter? You flip it. So it's going to be y equals negative 0 to root x of e to the t over t dt plus the integral from 0 to x of e to the t t dt. Now can you apply the FTC part one? Yeah. Yes, now you can. Now here's the thing. Do you have to pick a value that's necessarily in between root x and x? You don't know what x is. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter because it doubles back on itself. What I mean by that is this. Let's say you had a function here and you were integrating from a to b like this. Mm. I'll put some axes in there just to make it a little clearer like this. So let's say you're going from a to b. Let's say I picked a c value, guys. Shh. Let's say I picked a c value right there. Do you agree that that plus that is equal to the integral from a to b? Yeah. Yeah. Sure, they, they glue together nicely. But let's say I picked a c value instead of there. Let's say I picked the c value right there. If I go from a to c, I have this part right here, correct? Mm. But then if I go from, and is that going to be negative or positive? This is going to be negative because you're going from A to, it's negative, right? And then you're going to go from C to, then you're going to get this right here, right? What's going to cancel out? The yellow part is going to cancel out because you're going to take away this much and then add this much and then go from A to B. So does it matter where C is? No. No, it doesn't matter where you place C to break apart an integral like that. What's important on this one is that you have to recognize, as you did, you need to have a constant on your, as your lower limit. It can be any constant. Generally speaking, why is 0 an arbitrarily good one to use? It's, it's, easy. it's easy to calculate. Exactly. It's easy to calculate. So are you plugging in 0 into this? No. You're going to get the same thing no matter what. When you take the, when you take the derivative of this, it's just going to be, sorry, let me get back to a pen here, y prime is going to be negative e to the x over x plus what? Oh, so not e to the x. Excuse me. What's up top there? It's not x. What is it? So it's e to the over times what? Ah. The chain rule applies. One half. The derivative of the square root of x. You have to apply the chain rule. But what's the next part? The next part's easy. e to the over x. You don't. What's the invisible thing right here? No, no one. just one. One is the invisible byproduct of chain rule when you're plugging in x. Okay, I gave you this instead. Kids, this is important. Let's say I said uh, the integral from 3 to 7 of x squared minus x dx. That's going to be equal to the limit as n goes to infinity, the summation of i equals 1 to n. What's the width in this one? 4 over n. Let me move this over a little bit, sorry times the function evaluated at x sub i. But in this case, where does the function start? What are we, what's our lower limit of integration? Three. So it's going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of the summation of i equals 1 to n of 4 over n times x squared minus x. But in this case, it's going to be 3 plus what? 4i over n and 3 plus 4i over n. Why is it 7? You're going from 3 to 4. What's the width of each piece? 4 over what? Uh, n. When i is n, what's n over n? One. What's 3 plus 4? There's your 7. So, is it, There's your 7. You